The next section is the introduction section. This is going to give a summary of the assumptions used in the analysis, and it will also provide a net worth statement. I'm going to be skipping the text reports, however, I do want to highlight this cash flow planning page. This is a great report to read to understand the underlying assumptions that are used for the cash flow planning approach in golden years. Easy Money has the same report, except dedicated to goal-based planning, so if you want to take a look at that as well, you could compare and contrast some of the differences between Easy Money and Golden Years and how those calculations work, what they're ultimately focused on, and those important underlying assumptions that are different between the two projections available through Total Planning Suite. So for Golden Years, this is going to be an optimized cash flow planning approach, so it's going to carefully account for all income sources and expenses, to determine if the clients have a shortage or surplus in every year of the projection, and it's going to illustrate the impact that those shortages and surpluses have on the client's ability for their assets to last through their projection or through their life expectancy. And it also takes an optimized approach, and by that it's going to pay very close attention to all the details. So any returns on your assets, for example, if we take a look here, interest, dividends, capital gains, and appreciation, those returns would be automatically reinvested, and so the full re return would be reinvested into the account every year. Taxes aren't charged on the earnings, they're actually instead part of the client's expenses. So if they can be covered by the client's cash flow or other income sources, they would be. And then the, the full return would be able to be reinvested into their assets. Also with taxes, it's going to do a full tax calculation every year. So rather than coming up with their current tax rate and using that tax rate throughout the projection like we do in Easy Money, this is actually going to run through the full tax breakpoints for federal and state taxes every year. Also include things like AMT, uh, anything like the net investment income taxes, the new 3.8% on Medicare, the amount of Social Security that's taxable every year. So we'll have all those rules built in and we'll go through this, the full income tax calculation each year. So some of these other pages here, important assumptions for the projection. You can review those and make sure everything looks correct for you and your client. The net worth, so we can see this is a graphical, or excuse me, this is the numbers view of the net worth. We can see the detail of the assets that are entered and liabilities to come up with their net worth. This is the ownership style, so we can see the net worth is broken down by owner. There are four different styles of net worth available, so you can take a look at the different options and see which one works best for you in your presentation style. If we look back on the same report options tab we had visited earlier, we can see the net worth, and this is where we can choose the different styles. So bank style has the assets on the left, the liabilities on the right, with a traditional bank type format. Consolidated gives you just a single row of all their assets, debts, uh, to come up with their net worth, and then there's also an express view. So you can change that, run the report, and see which one you prefer. So we have the net worth statement, followed by the net worth graph. So we can see a graphical view of their net worth situation for the current year, and a quick summary of the numbers used below. Then we get into asset details, and some other details, including personal property, liabilities, insurance, we won't go through all those items, but I do want to point out a few things on this asset details report. Let me zoom in here so we can read some of this text. So you'll notice this list a description of each one of the assets, the value, the additions, the rates of return, owner, liquidity, group, class, type, and retirement. So I just want to point out a couple things here. Four monthly additions, you'll notice for Karen's 403B, we can see additions to the left and to the right of the slash. So anything to the left is personal contributions that the client's making to this asset. Anything to the right is going to be company additions. So in this case, she's putting away $175 a month towards her 403B and her company is making a matching contribution. Other thing I wanna point out is this retirement column. In most cases, this will be yes across the board here. And if it does not say yes, that means that the check if used for retirement box is unchecked on the data input. So if we take a look back at the data input under asset details, it's going to be this checkbox right here, check if used for retirement. If you uncheck this box, that means that that asset would only be used for the client's current year net worth and it would not be included in the projection going forward. 
that might be appropriate if it's something like a business asset that they're going to be selling in the future and you're you're recording the income stream at that point so you just want to capture it as kind of a placeholder for their current year net worth um, but in most situations it would be an asset available for spending in the retirement situation and if that is the case you want to make sure to check this box Okay, so one last thing on this report, you can also choose to sort by different styles. Right now it is sorted by description, so it's alphabetical, which is the default. Again, if we look back on our input on that report options tab again, this is where you can choose the different sort options. So you can really sort by most of those column headers. Okay, so then let's see here. There is a report talking about how to use the audit trail in this introduction section as well. This is a great report. The audit trail is a super helpful feature available in both Easy Money and Golden Years. But this gives you a description of how it works. It's very straightforward though. I'll just explain it a little bit here. You'll notice each one of the sections has a starts with a letter followed by the report page with a number. So the introduction sections are the A's, cash flows are the B's, assets are the C's, and so forth. So to show you how this works, if we want to take a look at, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but if we wanted to look at their cash flow illustration, which shows their year by year income sources and expenses, you'll notice there's a report. It says B7 on the top right hand side. You can also see it on the left hand side navigation item. But if you scroll down to the bottom of any of these columns, it's going to give you this is the audit trail reference. So if we wanted to get a breakdown of earned income and how that's changing and the details behind it, we can look at report B. B9, which is earned income, so it's going to break that sum number up into individual one salary, self-employment, and individual two salary and self-employment income. If we were to do the same thing for this living expenses and taxes column, it would tell us to go look at report B8, which is the annual expense illustration, and so you can see a breakdown of their total expenses, whether it's personal, insurance premiums, debt payments, account deposits that they're making, uh, other expenses, itemized deductions, or income taxes. And we can continue to break those numbers down as far as they can using that audit trail reference. So it's a very handy feature. So again, you can choose to turn that on or off back on that same input under assumptions and then that report options tab.